What's going on guys? Jax the Bearded Hiker here. Mom's Mints and Ale. That's what I'm calling this dish today. I'll tell you the story about that a little bit later on. Some people might call this loose meat sandwiches. Think sloppy joe without the slop or all the fake stuff and chemicals. So this may look and sound like a sloppy joe. Have you ever had beer in a sloppy joe? Not beer before your sloppy joe or beer while you're having the sloppy joe just to get through that hot mess. I'm talking about beer actually in the sloppy joe. And that, my friends, is why we're not calling this a sloppy joe. And we're calling it Mom's Mints and Ale. And we're gonna be doing it in the discada. I get excited every time I use this thing. All right, first thing is we're gonna do is we're gonna take some butter flavored Crisco here, about a tablespoon. Uh, I wanna say this, you can cook this on the stove. I just really like using this discada. Uh, make sure you check the link below in the description because uh, you might can get this thing at a discount if you want by using the code that I'm gonna leave below. So the story behind how this recipe all came about is when I was a kid, we used to go to this uh, restaurant or it was more of a like a sandwich shop and we would get these uh, sandwiches that were made with this minced meat and it was very heavily peppered and they were so good so when I was a kid my mom when we moved away from where we used to get them and we my mom started recreating these uh, style sandwiches and you know mama's and recipes you never are really supposed to take mama's recipe and cook it for yourself because I don't know for whatever reason it never you know taste the same so never really asked my mom how to cook these well my mom passed away in February of this year and I got to thinking recently about how I would never get these sandwiches again so I took it upon myself to try to recreate her version of these sandwiches and they're not even close to being the same but these are pretty pretty bad a eh? anyways you guys should give this a try all right, so let me just tell you guys what I'm doing with this meat here is I'm just laying the whole thing in there just like that and I'm going to brown it like this and in my opinion when you do it this way you actually get a truly browned piece of meat rather than a uh, grayed piece of meat. So we're going to liberally salt and pepper it and uh, my original recipe here calls for one pound of ground beef but we got some people coming over so we're actually doing three pounds of ground beef so everything that I'm doing the ingredients that I'm gonna be adding today is triple but on the blog I'll put you know use the one pound version all right so we're just gonna continue to brown this up before we actually start chopping it up. I'll show you what it looks like. And see what I'm saying guys? You see the nice and crispy? We're gonna do that to both sides and then we'll start breaking it up. Looks like we're nice and browned up. So now, by the way, this makes it very easy to break up. And uh, tell you what, while we're breaking it up, go ahead and throw in your onions. Now that is uh, two very large onions. So we've chopped up our meat really, really good and our onions are a little bit uh, soft. I wouldn't call them, they're not caramelized or anything. So now we're going in with three tablespoons of yellow mustard. You don't even taste the mustard, guys, so don't even start freaking out. I don't know what it is about people and mustard. They freak out. All right, I got three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Last time I said Worcestershire, somebody gave me a little bit of crap because I didn't say it right. <clears throat> three pinches of cayenne pepper. And then we're going to go in with some garlic powder. Now, that's going to be just like salt and pepper. It's you know just up to your uh, what you want and again remember what I told you is 
my mom went very heavily on the pepper so we're gonna have like some very heavy on the black pepper let's give this a good worry around a little bit it smells incredible don't it <clears throat> Now, originally, from what I understand, I never even heard of loose meat sandwiches before. But I, when I was doing some research on these sandwiches, because I was actually trying to see if the place that we used to go to, actually, uh, maybe somebody made these sandwiches. But anyway, I ran across this loose meat sandwiches, and it's completely different. It has vinegar in it, has sugar in it. Um, but anyway... It's supposed to be a really great uh, restaurant. It's called the Something Tavern. I don't know. I'll put it. It's no longer uh, open. I think it turned into something else. But uh, anyway, it's in Indiana, I believe it is. Another thing that we're going to be adding in here now that we got all that incorporated is beer. And just so you know, my mom would have never cooked with beer. This is made by red hair it's uh from georgia and it is called uh sticky stout we're gonna go ahead and uh add the whole can in there we're gonna add more than this because when i cooked this the first time using a pound of ground beef uh i used the whole can but we're using obviously three three pounds now so may go with two we'll see what that does because you just want to cover your meat and you're basically going to be simmering the heck out of this for a while and i mean when i say a while basically you're going to simmer all of this liquid off until it's completely gone i don't know if we should add another you don't think so we'll see i don't know i we're going to leave it like this for now. We're going to see how it does. And we may end up adding that other can. We'll see. Uh, well, let's just cover it and simmer it. Now, we have cut our uh, heat down to a simmer. So, we're just going to keep simmering it. And if I put the other can in, I'll let you guys know. We've been going about an hour here. And as you can see, the pan down so they can see the moisture here. So, you see there's... I mean, it's a little bit of moisture, not a lot, but uh, I just tasted it, and uh, it's not really where I want it, so we're going to add a little bit more salt. We're going to go heavy on the pepper again, like two, maybe three good pinches, and we're going to go ahead and add this whole can of beer. So this will be our third can of beer. Now, this will be it. We won't be adding any more beer after this. And we're just going to give it a little stir now. So I also want to say this. So my cover that I've had over it, it's not actually cover. I mean, I'm just keeping leaves and stuff from falling out of the trees over it. But it has, this cover I have for this discata has a gap between it. So when you first put this on, bring it up to a boil, then cut it down to a simmer. And you will probably want to keep yours uncovered or at least your lid crack. Okay, we got a little bit of oil left. I moved everything off the side. Obviously, this would be buttered buns, but seeing as how we're doing it in the discata, we're just gonna do it like that. Ooh, just kind of set these off, dip them a little bit, and move them off to the side, get them uh, crisped up a little bit. Yeah. All right, so normally, we had a little bit of oil in there. Normally, we're gonna add some mayonnaise. Okay, so, hang on a second. This didn't really work out as well as I thought with these sliders here. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just gonna take some of this meat. Woo, it's gonna be hot, dang it. So normally the way this is served or the way I had them when I was a kid, they were on more like sub rolls and then the meat was on there and then they sprinkled cheese on there and, I, and then I would probably venture to say 
that they put it in the broiler but since how we're outside and I didn't want to ruin the outside vibe with sub rolls and a broiler this is how we're gonna try it tasted the meat already it's freaking bomb so mayonnaise and a pickle cheese would traditionally be served on here but we don't have the cheese out here so oh my god oh man I will admit this is the first time I've actually had it on a sesame slider and like this usually when I've when I made it before it was on the sub rolls and whatnot I actually think this is better Mm. All right. This is, oh man. Guys, this is off the freaking chain. You should try it. One of the things that I want to tell you on here, I used, uh, what was it, 90, 10, 80, 20? 80, 20, 80, 20 uh, meat. And I used a tablespoon of the butter flavored Crisco. I probably could have used a little bit less. So keep that in mind when you do this or when you cook this dish, uh, you don't want it to be too much oil. So if you're using 80-20, cut down on some of the Crisco or oil that you use. All right guys, mom's mince and ale sandwich or loose meat sandwiches, do it. Mmm, that's killer. You better than last time. Yeah? I think it's the... the grilled... sliders. Mmm. That's killer. Mmm. Damn, that's good. <laughs>